What up ladies and gentlemen, Chen Chen here bringing you guys another video. Today I am back doing another informative guide. Guys, it seems as if you guys are loving this and honestly I love making them. So today's video will be how to 1v9 carry with Vladimir. This was probably low diamond MMR. Uh, you can see that we have diamond players and then a plat. So probably D4 slash plat 1 MMR. Now, although this is low diamond MMR, I'm pretty sure this gameplay right here will show you the fundamentals in 1v9 carrying any elo. Especially low elo, if you follow these fundamentals, you will 100% 1v9 carry. Guys, I reached uh, probably gold from gold to plat on my climb. I had around an 80% win rate with Vladimir. How? Because I 1v9 majority of my games and you have to get in the habit of doing this if you want to be able to climb. So that's pretty much it for the introduction. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash like button, join the Crimson Pack by subscribing to the channel. And let's get right into it. Right off the bat, we got some lovely Fiesta. Pretty sure Kaisa dies. Beautiful, beautiful. Just classic diamond fucking shenanigans. <laughs> so Pantheon starts the game off with one kill right and now this matchup if you play vladimir you should know this is not very favorable for vlad obviously vlad's a scaling champ and pantheon is very very early game reliant but if you play it properly and you'll see through this gameplay exactly what i did to really abuse him and just create myself a humongous lead and another note i'm pretty sure this evelyn is hard smurfing so we're getting right into lane. You can see that I'm going to respect him a little bit. I'm not autoing the wave because it would mean that the wave, their min the enemy minions would start walking towards me. I don't really want that. I want to try to keep the wave at the middle if possible. So you can see I'm just focusing on farming, not really doing anything else. If he's trying to pressure, I'm going to allow him to pressure. Now right here, Xin is going for a gank, which I will definitely follow up. And that's just a free kill right there. So I'm pretty sure... Uh, because Pantheon burned his flash uh, doing that early invade, I knew that this would be a super easy gank, so I just followed up with all my sums. Normally, I would not use any of my sums for that, but, you know, he didn't have flash, so that was just super free. And as you can see right here, we are slow pushing the wave. There's no way Vladimir can crash this fast enough, so I'm slow pushing to pretty much guarantee that he's going to miss a lot of minions. And this isn't even a slow push as more minions are on his side but i'm not crashing the wave because if i try to crash the wave i would just be fucked so i see that pantheon is missing and i'm pinging i saw him go top side so like you want to really be aware of how you use your pings i saw him walk towards top side so as you can see where my pinging i'm pinging top side dangers right here want to get in the habit of doing that even though there's a potential maybe like i don't know towards the late game maybe they might be doing like camps or something you want to get in the habit of just pinging your team you see that they don't have vision and that pantheon walked top so get in the habit of doing that very good solid solo queue advice so i'm just constantly pinging and i'm looking at exactly what's happening they should be able to get out. They're fighting. And there's Pantheon. So like what's very important about what I'm doing right now. I see Pantheon roaming. But I'm calm, cool, collected. All right, I'm using my pings efficiently. And I am prepping the wave to a very good favorable position. So as you see, the wave right now is kind of in a frozen state. Pantheon is missing so much wave, and look, he is still freaking topside. When he comes back, you're going to see exactly what I do, and this is what allowed me to just take this game completely out of control in 1v9. So, you know, they got a pretty successful dive, but it's just so early in the game. Pantheon losing this much pressure is never, never good. Right, so I'm continuing to keeping the freeze. I know this is what's going to benefit me the most, right? It's going to make me get most CS and him miss a lot of CS. If I crash, guys, it is uh, it is three minutes 
and 50. So if I crash, right, what can I get? I can get a wave and I can potentially start hurting the turret, but because it's so early in the game, turrets aren't actually going to take much damage. I'd much rather constantly deny him my wave so he loses on XP and gold, right? You can see this wave is already dead. Beautiful, beautiful. We're trying to keep this wave once again. So Pantheon arrives back in lane, but he doesn't even care. He still goes bot lane, right? So as you can see, my wave, it's not the greatest because this will actually fully crash. So I'm just like, all right, I'm not going to help my team there. I'm just going to let him die and focus on myself. Right now, it is, he has six yes to my 20, to my 30. So this... This lane is looking absolutely beautiful for me, despite him having a ton of kill participation. And he's level 3 to my level 5, so you know damn well I'm going to abuse that. Constantly keeping the wave near this area. He cannot play the game if it's near this area. He's face checking. Fortunately, Vlad doesn't have any mobility, so I can't really get to him fast enough. I ignite and I auto and I get him. I might die here. Yeah, I probably do. So it's just one of those things that's very unlucky. But regardless, we got Pantheon. It is what it is. And now we can buy the juicy, juicy item. 1,700 gold. If you're a Protobell user, mm, absolutely perfect. You get 20% CDR. Best purchase ever. Skipping past, we are now back in lane. So guys, at this point... He is, he just reached level 4, I am almost level 6. So let's see how I abuse this. He's trying to fight me, I know that I'm actually stronger than him. Despite him having so many kills, I know that I'm stronger than him, so I'm just autoing him down, and it's just a free kill. There's no reason why he would try that. Despite my team being behind, just because he tried to pressure early, I'm able to take the game into my control and solo kill him. And that's pretty much going to guarantee this lane. There's no way he comes back, right? He's missed like 20 waves uh, worth of XP and gold. And I'm Vladimir. So automatically this circumstance is never favorable for him. So he comes back. I know I'm in a very, very dominating uh, situation. So I'm going to play like it. No more freezing. No more nothing. We're going to shove the wave. And look, we're going to start pressuring him under turret. So you can already see why this game is considered a 1v9. It's 6v9. My team is absolutely ending. I have 50% of my team's kills. And now, yes, guys, most players won't be an ape like this Pantheon and just randomly roam permanently. But you can take this circumstance and punishing the enemy for their mistakes and it's it's so universal of a tip right so many mid laners are going to try to rotate going to try to roam you can abuse that as you can see right here where i'm just constantly abusing this pantheon making sure he cannot play the game i'm right up in his face i'm not scared of him at all i'm level seven to his level five there's just no way he wins okay computer kind of was acting up there randomly now I'm actually getting uber uber ganked and I end up dying. So this is a massive massive tempo loss. It is what it is. I was not expecting Karthus to be there. So uh, just <laughs> all I can say was that was a bit unlucky, a bit of a misplay. Trendemir being toxic. As you can see, a very very big team diff, but we are able to come back later on. Fast forward, fast forward. We're not doing too bad, right? CS could be a lot better, but with these two deaths, I've really lost a lot of tempo. And getting perfect CS or like really, really near perfect CS is going to be pretty impossible, especially against a Pantheon matchup. But it is what it is. We are continuously pressuring the turret and shoving the wave. It's a complete pace difference from early game, right? Early game, we had a freeze setup and we're going to continue freezing denying pantheon cs now it's a continuous shove looking for turret plating looking to get myself 
maximum amount of gold. I don't care about the Pantheon anymore. The Pantheon is already behind. So that's my mentality. Let's see this trade. So he jumps into me. Like I said, I already know I am much stronger than him. I'm just going to all in him here. No clue what he's doing. Evelyn shows up to the party. I might die here. Perfect W. I actually outplayed it. That was absolutely perfect W right there. So I'm pinging assistance because I know Evelyn could be literally wrapping around again. So I want Zin Zhao to help me just pretty much hover near me in case Evelyn comes back. After getting a solo kill, you almost always want to hard shove and then look for a reset. As you can see here, looking for the hard shove. Pantheon goes aggressive. Like I said, I'm much stronger than him. Evelyn goes in on me again. This time, not too lucky. <laughs> not too lucky with the W. But this is where I was like, all right, this game is looking pretty doomed. Just play off mid, as you can see, where I'm typing. Play off mid, just sit if you want. Because I know... I'm the only chance we have of winning. There's no way my teammates are going to be able to impact the game, right? Literally, Janna came two times, Evelyn came two times. Like, it's just a fucking fiesta. So I'm like, play off mid, play off me, and we will win. Right off the bat, like, if you're low elo and you, you see this type of circumstance, you would probably mentally boom. It's very important to keep your mentality up. Ping Yumi to come sit on me. The reason being is I know that since, since bot turret is already gone, right? That means not only is Pantheon going to continue coming mid, but their bot lane is as well. So I'm telling Yumi to sit on me so I have a decent chance at at least surviving. Even though it might not be the smartest idea, because you can already see their APC coming. Get a really good poke there. Because I know I'm in a very risky position, I am just trying to hard shove and not sit mid if I can. So you can see... I'm actually going really aggressive. That could have been played a lot better. <laughs> Could have definitely been played a lot better, but is what it is. Get them out of my ass. Still very good. Like I said, guys. Like I said earlier, I know because bot turret is gone, they're going to continue just literally coming mid. So I know it's going to be a fiesta. That's why I need Yumi on top of me. And this is going to probably happen for a while. Kaisa's not listening to me. Kaisa should be going bot right now. Reason being, normally mid would probably swap, right? But in this instance, since I know I'm the carry, there's a turret to back me up. So being near this area is much better than me being like right here. They have so many angles to get on top of me. So that's why I wanted to go mid and I told Kaisa to go bot. Because I'm in the carry seat. Now if Kaisa was... Like, not too behind or something, you know, I would definitely swap. We're actually going to fight here. Spacing properly, playing very safe, playing very scared. We got a kill, flashed out, and I should be able to live. Beautiful, beautiful. So we got mid turret. We are backing now. Nice, Kaisa stole Drake. That is absolutely huge. So I'm just going to type good job and take the back. Or not. Shove one more wave and then take the back. As long as you know you're not in any risk, uh, greeting for the wave is perfectly fine. There's no objectives to fight for, so I can slowly clear and I should be backing. Or I could greet for another wave, <laughs> knowing me. It's because I saw Pantheon and Rengar top. It's a super free time to just pretty much shove fully, get the maximum amount of gold before I back. There we go, I back for my needlessly large rod. Now guys, the game plan now is pretty much reach late game, and it's an automatic, automatic victory. 
So I'm looking, I'm looking. I see that Kaisa Yumi is top, Trin is going top. Now there's a very high chance that these two will rotate mid. So I see that uh, bot is where I can go for maximum gold. So I'm pinging as well. I'm using my pings. Someone defend mid. Now sometimes they're not going to listen, but the ideal play right now is someone going mid. So Trendamir is able to catch that. Realize that I am slow pushing, so I am pushing this as slowly as possible to ensure that I'm not going insanely deep. This is because one, their team is pretty fed, right? They have a lot of kill pressure on me, I don't even have my Rabadons yet. So there's a very slim chance that I actually live, unless it's like just a random Pantheon coming. If I do this as slow as possible, I can guarantee that... How many gold do I have? How much? I have 373 gold. I'm very far away from my 1250 that I need for another rod. So I recognize that. And what's going to maximize the amount of time I can stay in the side lane is slow pushing. So my team get caught. I'm like, whatever. Slowly pushing. Slowly getting gold. That's what matters for me. So you saw, like, that was maybe, like, 30 seconds of permanently freezing right here. And then, unfortunately, it broke. These type of things are very hard to set up, right? Um, but right, as you can see, I was, like, 350 gold. Now I am very, very close to my item. Just from farming like that. And I, I see this, so now, look, I'm hard shoving. I recognize that I broke a freeze, but I'm, like... I almost have my item, so now I hard shove, and I back. I denied the enemy probably three waves, right? Just doing what I did. Not only did they lose three waves, but I also got all the farm, and I got my item. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm starting to group. I'm typing Yumi permanently stay on me. I know the title says 1v9, but... Come on, guys. Yumi is a is an item. All right, it doesn't count. But no, Yumi definitely did help this game for sure. In terms of macro, though, and game-winning fights, that's the theory craft of my one v nine. This game, where I truly one v nine team fights. Anyways, we're able to catch Rengar. Beautiful, beautiful. I owe Evelyn. Do I get her? No, I actually don't. Very unfortunate her passive saved her. Anyways, we are just waiting for a dragon. Beautiful, beautiful. Two of them are dead and this should be our free dragon. Right? Should be. Alright, let's see what goes here. Rengar is going in. I try to deal as much damage to him as possible. I'm getting hard targeted, but... Beautiful EW. I'm able to kill. Uh, unfortunately, Yumi left. Unfortunately. Yumi hopped off because she thought I died, but... Am I able to get out? Probably not. Yeah, Karthus ends up picking me up. And I type, Yumi, you should have stayed on me. Yeah, if Yumi stayed on me, guys, I would have pented. I literally would have pented. The game would have been over, but is what it is. You can't rely on your teammates in a 1v9. So realize how I'm typing, how I'm communicating. If you want to truly 1v9, now a 1v9 term is very rare, right? You completely 1v9ing is very rare, but... You get, you get the term, right? The term of 1v9 where your teams are complete apes and you manage to carry the game. So in that aspect, you want to tell your teammates exactly what to do. It's very important. 
So once again, I'm still typing. I split, there's no objective, please don't get caught. And they can't rush Baron, which is which is true. They don't have the team comp to rush Baron, especially at 20 minutes without getting like some sort of pick. So I'm free to split, but I'm not trying to permanently split. I know that Baron is up, and I know that teammates are very unreliable, so I'm just trying to get as much farm as possible. They end up trading, which is not bad. They're not able to start Baron, and I get so much from splitting. So they're, they chose to start Baron in a 4v4 situation. And I'm coming towards it. Realize that I am fine to give Baron just because I know I can carry team fights. So Baron doesn't actually do anything for them. I was perfectly fine giving Baron. So I'm jumping into the back line. Able to pick off Pantheon. And this should be a good fight. There's a double kill. And there's a triple. So right there, sure they got Baron, but they they literally don't get anything off of it, like, genuinely. So being able to trade and recognize in your brain, hey, let's trade Baron so Vlad can get split pressure, very important. Another reason why I didn't want to, like, go Baron. So, let me explain this real quick. If I went for Baron or grouped for Baron, neither... One, we can't start Baron, right? We cannot start Baron, right? It's just too risky. And two, they can't start Baron. What am I writing? Why am I writing this? So, we can't start Baron, they can't start Baron. So, what's gonna happen? We're literally just gonna, like, jerk each other off for, like, five minutes. There's no point right side lane is much more important it's guaranteed farm i knew that i can carry the game if i were to get side lane farm if i went here i would be losing gold losing xp so that is why i did this and also very important to look at your flash timer i'm practically not a champion without my flash so i see that my flash is enough for baron we're just gonna flip it right if they want baron we'll give him if they don't want it whatever So, ends up being a fight. Should be able to pick up Pantheon. Beautiful, beautiful. Right now, I am just absolutely fed. To where they cannot do anything. My Trendomir is borderline trolling. He's 1-7. Right? So, like, this is a pretty good breakpoint to, to show you, like, the 1v9, right? My jungler is beyond, like, behind, like... He has 96 CS, uh, very, very behind. Now, granted, the Evelyn is also behind, but Evelyn is behind because of me. And then you can see we don't have a top laner as well. Our ADC is decent, and our support is decent. But compared to their team, I would definitely say this was a pretty good 1v9. Pantheon has 50 CS. He's getting absolutely demolished. All thanks to my insane macro. So if you're an AP champion, I always recommend going Magi's. It's the safest way to guarantee a pure 1v9. So I end up going bot. Remember, Drake is about to spawn. I always love to push out uh, either mid or bot before Drake. Sometimes my team gets caught, as you see here. It just it happens, but... I have flash. I have everything I could possibly need. This is super free. And Trendomir is once again trolling. If Trendomir came, this game would be super free. I'm pretty sure he said he wasn't reading chat or something, but... Either way, we flash in and get a, I believe, a four-man ult. Beautiful EW. And... Unfortunately, we didn't get all. 
And you can see how I'm tilted, right? Like, I'm super fed, we're kinda losing, so I type, Chen, are you fucking trying to lose the game? There's no reason why he should be top. If he was here, right, I got a beautiful ult. If Trendemir was here, we would've won the game. The reason why I was very tilted here is because I burned Flash. So I have to wait another five minutes before, like, we can actually do anything. Luckily, the enemy team did not abuse the fact that I didn't have Flash. So we're farming jungle camps, just trying to maximize our gold as much as possible. Alright, so let's look at this fight. So they're starting to fight. They're all grouped up. I get a, I believe a one or two man ult. Not the greatest, but we end up actually picking off Karthus, I believe. And look at this. Beautiful E usage. I'm able to hit all of their, all of the uh, enemies. And that was a very good fight. Should be able to pick off Janna as well. We proc phase rush. And Evelyn should be dead as well. She lives with 1 HP? No way. She actually does. Feels bad. So, the reason why that fight worked so well, they were all clumped up and Karthus was horribly positioned. Guys, I promise you're going to see some insane 1v9 later. I'm pretty positive I make the game winning fight that just allowed us to end. But right now you can see it's still a very very good 1v9. Like my Zin Zhao is absolutely useless because Zin Zhao sucks dick uh, late game. I believe I kill him right? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely destroyed him. And still shot calling I'm telling them to come now. Super free Baron. Kaisa decides to go for Krugs instead, which is... Feels good. But yeah, this is just a super easy Baron. We end up picking Baron and Void Staff, and we're full build now. So right now... Right now I am full build with Flash. I am looking to end the game with the next fight. So you're going to see that. So I end up typing, like I said, very important to have communication. I type, uh, we should all mid, I have flash, we end. And then Trend says, okay. This is the type of thing you want to do. Make your teammates your robots. They do your bidding. They do whatever you want. You're the king. You're the carry, right? So being able to communicate is very important. And remember, I know I have Baron, so that was the game-winning play. Just like that. Just like that. Now, unfortunately, Evelyn did like 3,000 damage with her ult. But that was the game-winning play. Absolutely beautiful. We ended the game... 18, 6, 8. Alright, absolute 1v9. One thing, like, VOD reviewing and, you know, something I can definitely improve on this game was CS. My CS was not the greatest, but for this game and how much of a fiesta it was, it's alright. I'm going to show you the 1v9 gameplay one more time. It was an absolutely flawless play. So, step one, tell your teammates to, to like, what you're thinking. If you're the carry... They should be playing around you. You don't want to play around them. That's just stupid, right? So I see them all clumped up. Beautiful flash. And EW. Just like that triple kill. As you can see, Evelyn. Like, my HP just fucking disappeared. I couldn't press Zanyas. But we were able to win thanks to my play. This game was fucking rough, man. You can see how much, like, it's just... It was rough. Um, but luckily we, we pulled through with the absolute insane carry. So 
that is how you 1v9, ladies and gentlemen. You can see that, uh, just look at the damage, right? Look at the beautiful damage. So yeah, guys, the Evelyn was supposed, supposedly a Grandmaster smurf, and we were able to absolutely crush her and crush her team. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you 1v9. Insane damage, insane game-winning fights that allowed us to win this game. If you do this consistently, you will be able to climb. That is it for the video. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you enjoyed these type of guides, make sure to smash the like button. Join the Crimson Pack by subscribing to the channel. That's pretty much it. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a great day. Chen Chen out.